All right. <clears throat> so tonight we're going to talk about dimensions. So we haven't even seen dimensions up to this point in this class. Right? So far it's just been boxes on grids. What's the problem with that? Yeah, you have no idea how big it is, right? So dimensions, all the numbers, tell us how big to make stuff. So the drawing provides a shape for us, and then the dimensions tell us what size to make. <clears throat> and we want to give all the dimensions necessary to make the part, but we don't get, want to give any duplicates. And what do you think I'm... I was trying to log out. Oh, did you save your stuff, though? No, um, no, I'll email it to you. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, see ya. Um, so when it says do not use duplicates, find something like that, and I put a dimension here, that height, and I give a dimension here for that, and a dimension there for that. Do I need all three of those? No. Oh. Why not? Because it's basically the same. Yeah. Overall. Same. Yeah, because two of those gives me what I need. The third one is just whatever's left over, right? Yeah. So this would be over dimensioning. This would be putting duplicate dimensions in. Even though it's not the same exact thing twice, it's still giving me too much information. So now I don't know which, what's important. Is this important? Is that important? Or is that important? Which two of those things do I really care about? And could I, from this, can I tell which one is more important? Just if I saw that part. Do I know which dimensions I need? Which ones are the important dimensions? What's not shown. What? Not I think this one, that one. But what if I really want to know how deep this is because something has to fit in that hole? And so it could be these two are the important ones. It could be that. And this one are the important ones, or it could be these two are the important ones. So, how would I know which ones are important? You have to look at the rest of the parts in the assembly. So, what is this part is going to go with? That tells you what's important, which makes it really hard in this class because we're only dealing with one part at a time. So, you really have to kind of guess. Um, next week, or in two weeks, we'll talk about working drawings, and that's, so that's the full set of drawings, like this. So we have an assembly, we've got sub-assemblies, we've got parts within the assembly, and they all go together in a certain way, and now it's easy to tell what's important. We're not gonna, I'm not going to make you guys do a whole set of drawings. <coughs> I'll take donations if you want. I could make you. Um, that'd be too, way too much work to do by hand. <coughs> um, so, without it, the rest of the drawings, you don't know what's important, so you kind of just have to guess. But at work, or if you're working on a project, you're going to know what, how it's going to mate with the other pieces, how it's going to interact. And that's how you can t figure out what dimensions you need. <coughs> so, we've already talked about drawings being done to scale. If you've changed a, a dimension, it's, and so it's no longer to scale, you put an underline underneath it. So, an example would be, um, like if you're doing a red line drawings for a house or something, and one of the walls on the drawing is 20 feet, and then you really may only make it 10 feet. So, you just, that wall is here. You had a dimension of 20 feet. And then you came through and you just erased that. And you wrote in 
throw it in 10 feet. You need to underline it because now that drawing doesn't actually show what that measurement is. So in the old days, when everyone did it by hand, that was real common because if you made an eighth of an inch change on something, instead of having to erase it and bring it down, you just put in a new number and underline it. Now with CAD, we just stretch it down and then reprint it. Uh, but so if you do, if you see an underline, that means that the what's on the drawing isn't really the right size. Okay. So when we're talking about dimension. There's three main areas. There's the technique. So that's how we draw the lines and the the arrowheads and how we do spacing. There's the placement. So where where do we put them? And the choice. And so this is kind of what we started talking about on the last, or a couple slides ago, was where do we put them, and, but, all, but more importantly, which ones do we need? <clears throat> and like I said, which ones are important? And importance is usually based on how are they going to check the part when it's done. So when you finish the part, how are you going to check it to make sure it's the right size? And then we'll add some other, if it doesn't matter, for inspection, we'll make it so it's easier to make. Or, or we'll add reference dimensions in to help the machinist that's making it, or the welder, or whatever. <clears throat> so for our lines, we have dimension lines. So dimension lines are the lines that have the text in them. So that line and that line, those are the dimension lines. <clears throat> so thin and dark. Where all lines are always dark, and like most lines, these ones are thin. We have our arrowheads at the end, and our text in the middle, or somewhere in the middle of the line. As long as it's between, like there and there, it's okay. And we have the extension lines, which are the lines here. And what do the extension lines do? Besides reading what I have. What, what do they do? What's that purpose of that extension line? Show where it starts and finishes the measurement. Yeah, it's showing us from our dimension line how do we get back down to the part. So if we've got a bunch of dimensions off to the side, we follow our extension lines back down to what it's measuring. You notice right here, there's a gap. That's what lets us know once we, we go down the extension line, we hit the gap, the next thing that we see, that's what we were measuring. So that's why we always want that gap there. If we don't have a gap there, and we, have, and we had crossed another line here, we don't know which line it's going to. Or it might get lost along the way. <clears throat> Especially if you're on something like that. You should just follow it back. Then there would be a little kind of gap there that you could, you could see. In here. Could the extension line come down and, oh, it stops there? So that, that's all it's talking about. What? I have no idea. <clears throat> so some spacing. We want at least three eighths of an inch between the part and our first dimension. Preferably more like half an inch. So half an inch is preference. Three eighths is minimum. And then between each line after that, a quarter inch minimum. Preferably three eighths. We really want that to be one half. We really want that to be three eighths. If we had enough space on the paper, we'd want to use the bigger measurements. If not, we could squeeze it down. Questions? Right. So arrowheads. 
we want the length about an eighth of an inch, the height about a third of that high. So about as long as our text is tall and then kind of skinny like this. This is kind of the general way to do it. I like to start out here for both of them. So when I draw an arrowhead, I'll draw my line, but I'll start out here, come down, start out here, come down, and then fill it in. I don't want any of these. That's using the wrong proportion. Long and skinny, not short and fat. Okay? I'm not going to measure them, but they should look something like that. <clears throat> so, which one of those four drawings on the bottoms, bottom looks best? Which one, which one is the clearest? So you think the third one looks best? Yeah? Really? What did we just talk about two slides ago? What? Yeah, the extension lines need to go all the way to the part, right? Well, that's crap. That one's not there. Because the extension lines aren't going all the way to the corner. You can hit here, and on this part, yeah, it's only a little bit, but what if that was halfway across the page? So now which one looks best? Yeah, the first one. This is our, that's our guy. <clears throat> that's fine. We can have it. We, we don't, we, extension lines can cross each other, no, no problem. Over here, we don't want our dimension lines, the dimension line, nothing should cross it. The dimension line here, dimension line there, <coughs> nothing should cross those lines. Ever. Or almost never. If you, can, if you can rearrange this, you don't have to cross them. That's the better way to do it. What about that one? <coughs> yeah, everything's inside the part. It's a hot mess, right? So that's just a. We want to be outside the part because we want to be able to see the part clearly, and then see the dimensions outside of. Questions. You also notice the extension line is coming out about an eighth of an inch past our dimension line. Okay. So, which one of these is better? Uh, a or B? Take about extension lines. Yeah. So here, if I follow this gap, there's a gap right there, right? So the next thing I get to should be what I'm measuring. Is there something right here that I'm measuring? No. So don't do that. Some people do. Some old engineers like to do that still. So if, they, if your boss tells you to do it, do it. Or educate them on what's better, what the current standard is, and you might get a raise, or you might get fired. 
<laughs> Go to your boss's boss and show him the current standard, and you'll get a raise, and your boss, your boss will get fired. That's even better. <laughs> you guarantee that? No. <laughs> but if you can show you that you know more about the standards than your boss, then there's at least a raise in it for you, probably. And the boss will say he told you that. <laughs> but if he's doing it this way, and you show him that the standard is this way, the standard is the law. <laughs> And, and it is. In, in drafting, your drawing is a contract. And if, some, if there's ever a dispute about your drawing not being clear, because you sent a drawing off to someone, they made 10,000 parts of something, and came back and it wasn't what you wanted, they're going to nitpick every little thing. I've heard about the nitpicking text height. And using that to drop down, how much they have to pay you when, when you sue them. And so they go through the standard, and anything that's not too standard is something that they can say, hey, look, this drawing is not too standard. This is not correct, so we don't have to pay. It's not our fault the drawing's wrong. Even if it has nothing to do with what they did wrong. And so this is the Bible, ASME Y14. It, we have a whole section here on line conventions and lettering. Um, Multi-view drawings. This is the section on drawings. This is another section of more drawings. So, these are the two sections on drawings on the standards relating to drawings themselves. Pretty thin, right? This is one about dig digital files. So instead of making drawings, you have all your digital files. This is the one on dimensioning. So drawing, dimensioning. Dimensioning is over almost twice as thick as these two combine. So when you're doing drawings, my kind of my rule of thumb is if it took me to took whatever it took me to draw it, it's gonna take me twice as long to dimension it. And that's just my general rule of thumb. I'll look at a drawing, try to figure out how long it's gonna take me, take me to draw it, and then I'll double that for how long it's gonna take to dimension. And then this one's on screws. So, <clears throat> so you have to kind of watch what you're doing, um, and so that's where if you know the standard better than your boss, and you can show it that you're actually watching out for the company, then they, then they got you. That's probably like two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks worth of standards right there. So, this is the way we want it, not that. <coughs> what about these two? Which one's better? I hear an A and I hear a second one. Who says the first one? Who says the second one? You guys see? But yeah, it's the first one. We want them to, to kind of group. We want them to see here, you're looking down here, looking up here, over here. We're kind of looking all over the place. Here, they're all in one little area. Also, if we draw a box around all, our whole part, that's called, called, our, called our envelope. We want our dimensions to be outside that envelope. Because now that, that helps to group them. I can look straight across one line and see all those dimensions. I'm not having to go up and down and around and, and trying to figure out where things are. So that's our envelope. We want to try and stay outside of that. And that helps us to force us to group them. And also see now that these are all in one straight line all the way across. 
that kind of helps make it a little neater. So when you look at a drawing, if it looks neat, you think it comes all across as being better. Even if it's not accurate, as long as if it's neat, it looks better. So that's one thing that I do when I look at drawings. If it doesn't look neat, then I'm going to have to criticize every little thing. If it, if it looks neat and dimensions are all nicely done, I know they probably know what they're doing. I, can, I don't have to look at every little thing as much. <clears throat> we have to mention that small spaces, we can put our arrows on the outside, which I like to do a lot. If I have space to put the text and the arrows inside, that's where it goes. If not, text inside, arrows outside. If it's too small for even the text, then you can put the text and the arrows outside. If they're really small, you can do it with like that. Or if you have two of them that are the same, you can do something like that. Uh, you do that. So now this area is 12, that area is 1.5. Okay. We can kind of share that arrowhead. Okay. Any questions on those? Kind of standard stuff. <coughs> if your text is going, if your lines are going this way, you can do it like that. You kind of come down and then bend to the side to get your text in. So that, that's acceptable also. Okay. <coughs> what about below? Which one of those do you think is better? Someone's seen a pattern here. Which one is better, A or B? A, B. What? B, A. So did I keep the pattern and I break the pattern? Why would B be better? Because you have all the numbers. Yeah, they're all right there. So this is kind of, so when you first think about it, this one looks better, right? <clears throat> but think of this is a real simple part. Think about if you had a, a much more complicated part, and instead of trying to keep your finger on it, because maybe if you had eight of these up and down. Then you have to keep your finger on which one you were talking about, and then trace the line over and down, and then come back up and look what the number was. Whereas if they're like this, you're like, okay, it's the one on the right, it's the one on the left, it's the one in the middle. So that that's part of it. <clears throat> but also, How clear is that? Okay. Now do you see where offsetting them really would, would help? Because now I can offset them. And it's not going to look like one straight number. But also by offsetting, I, I can kind of get them a little bit closer. Especially if I have tolerances and things like that, which we'll talk about next week. Because <clears throat> that can make your text really long. Or if I want nodes or anything, by offsetting I get more space to work with. So that's why we want to we want to offset our dimensions. Okay. I know it's tricky by giving you this example, but that's the real the real, real reason. <clears throat> you have to think of both the horizontal and the vertical. <clears throat> so don't dimension hidden lines. 
I wanted to mention that. What what I do? Now, I want to do it on that view. I do a breakout section. Right? I draw my short break line, turn those headlines into saw lines, draw some section lines. Now it's visible lines, now I can dimension it. That is why we do sections. Cut off. That's the reason why we do sections. So we can turn headlines into visible lines, now we can dimension them. <clears throat> and that's a big reason why we do anything, is we want to be able to make it so we can dimension it. So auxiliary views. What was one of the main reasons we did auxiliary views? Yeah, just to see a whole wires round, right? Why? Because we're going to drill that hole, we need to figure out how to measure it from the edges to drill it. So we need to look straight down at it. So that's just another reason why we Everything we've done so far is to get ready for this. <clears throat> if we have round parts, we dimension them with a leader, so we kind of make our leader here point at the center of the circle. We put an arrow head on it, we're touch the, the part, we come up and put a little flat spot, and then our text. Always pointing towards the center of the circle. Also, what we want to do is that we have our circle there, and we have our, our axis. If we draw a line at like 15 degrees and at 75 degrees there, this spot in here, you don't put leaders in that area. So your leaders have to come out somewhere between 15 and 75 degrees on any, any quadrant. So the red spot, no leaders. Don't put leaders in, at those angles. Why? Why do we want to do leaders in those angles? Maybe, part, but why else? And even when we do leaders like this, we want to stay at those same angles. Why? What are most of the other drawings on the, the lines on the drawing? Aren't most of the other lines we draw on the drawing, but either vertical or horizontal, for the most part? So by drawing these at a, a different angle, we're kind of making them different than a standard hidden line or center line, or even another extension or dimension line. So, so we're kind of saying that, we're kind of showing out that this is not a dimension line. I've seen was where they go up, and it, you just you can't find. When you're looking for a hole, or the side of the hole. You're looking for this, not a line going straight up. <coughs> what? Yeah. Then now I can look at it and easily see, line at an angle. Okay, that's that's the dimension for that hole. I can also use leaders for notes. It's so like here. Or here, what was the difference between those two? Between this one and that one. Yeah. So if it points to the edge. So, yeah. So if it's to, to an edge or what looks like a line, we use an arrowhead. If we're pointing at the, the actual surface itself, like here, it's pointing at that surface, and it's pointing to the middle of the surface. We use a dot. Okay. Questions? Oh. Okay, shake it out. Um, after we do this side, we'll take a break. Tonight's going to be a long one. Um, so, 
Now we're talking about dimension and rounding. So if we draw things, usually we'll try and get things to nice clean decimals or something. So maybe like an eighth of an inch or a quarter or a half or three eighths or five eighths, something like that. But on our drawing, we don't want to always want to show that, show all those decimal point places, <coughs> because we have to pay for zeros. So, like on this drawing, I think it says point x equals plus or minus point one. So that's my tolerance for how precise I have to make it. My decimal places <coughs> call it a general tolerance. So I have to pay for these, these zeros on my dimensions. So we don't always want to show the full number of dimensions. So we have to round them. <coughs> so 5.30 seconds is 0.152. 1562. If I round it to two places, what does it become? What? 0.16. Yeah, 0.16, right? If I went to this place, yeah. over 5, that one goes up, right? What about that? Yeah, 0.09. What about that? Two by two, we're going to get 0 0.06. If you divide 0 0.13 by two, you get 0 0.065. It, it doesn't work out. <clears throat> so when the last number is a five, you go to the even number. Okay? Then you go to the next even number, and if yeah. the even number is over five, then you ground out. Yeah. Okay. So the next even number here was up, so we went to it. Here is there we go down. Okay. Questions? Um, I should we'll do a couple more slides. <clears throat> we'll take a break in like ten minutes. All right, how are you guys doing? You guys need a break now? You need a break now. We want to keep going for ten more minutes. All right. <clears throat> so when we have angles, we have two options for how we dimension it. We can either dimension it with a distance and an angle, or two distances. Which one is better? Which is better, that way or that way? First one, second one, the third. Oh. <laughs> 
So I have some first, I have some seconds. How do you know which is better? Depends. <clears throat> Sometimes that's better. Sometimes that's better. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. Remember that other part that's having to go with? <clears throat> if that part, <clears throat> oh man, <clears throat> if that part has an angle on it, and an edge dimension with an angle, and you know that that needs to be 30 degrees, then do the angle. If it's, that you know that it's gonna be those measurements, do it like this. So if I knew that um, this part, If I had another piece that would have those measurements that I needed to go into, like if if I was doing a, if, if this was like on a, um, a cylindrical part and it was a taper, and I was going to measure that, or maybe measure that, <clears throat> then the measurement, because that, that's easier to measure. Uh, or if it, it was an angle that I needed, then I'd use the angle. So it kind of depends on really what it's going with. Um, and that depends on kind of how much you want to be able to move also because here you control exactly where that point is. Here, if that angle's off, that can move a lot more. Because a one degree off here is not a big difference. Depending on the length of that, one degree could be a lot. <coughs> so we can also, it's one word to mention it. You notice that this line isn't a line. There. Yeah, so what it is is the center is there. So that's how you draw that in. You put your center at the corner, and then you just draw an arc. If you don't have space to put it inside, if you're using the angle, you can put the arrows outside, just like before. What's that? What's that measurement? It's 48 and a half degrees, right? What's that measurement? What was that? Yeah. <clears throat> 126 degrees in 30 minutes. How many minutes are in a degree? I'm looking at the answer. 60. 60 minutes in a degree. So the degrees are kind of like hours. <clears throat> so 60 minutes in a degree. Because the, the clock hand, right? <clears throat> and then there's past that, there's 60 seconds in a minute. So depending on what you're doing, if you do anything that's civil, so like roads or any of that stuff, maps, that's all degrees, minutes, seconds. Or um, they'll abbreviate it DMS, degrees, minutes, seconds. Or this is decimal degrees. Okay. <clears throat> when we have <clears throat> arcs and holes, like you said, we always want to make sure where we see it round. That's kind of the, the reason that we've done all those other views. Usually, so on these part these parts here, the parts going this one, right? On these parts, it's going that way. We're outside of the part, so we could do that. We could also do it this way. And then now we're in the envelope. We're going to come through and out like that. Kind of the arcs are kind of one of the exceptions to where you can kind of go inside the envelope sometimes. <coughs> um, <coughs> 
Also, if our paper is going to end here, our paper is going to end there. And so we don't have enough space to get to the actual center point of it. We can do that. <clears throat> this is called um, jogging our, right, our convention. So we, this one is still pointing at the real center. But then we kind of just jog it up and bring it back. And now from here, we can put in that dimension. And so I'd put in maybe eight. What else do I need to do to that? <coughs> we talked about it earlier. Underline it. Because that's not the real dimension, right? So that'd be one way to do it. So now we can see where it's lined up with, and then we can see the real dimension there. Um. <coughs> and also with <clears throat> like fillets and rounds, we, we want to use the radius. What is, what's a fillet and what's a round? So here, fillets are six, rounds are three. What's the difference between a fillet and a round? Yeah, this is a round. The outside corner, that's a fillet. It's an inside corner. Fillets are inside corners, rounds are outside corners. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have a, a part that's like cast, so it has fillets and rounds on everything, you know, instead of having to dimension all of them, just make a note. So fillets this, rounds that, all fillets and rounds, all casting radii. <clears throat> and so that covers anything that's not dimensioned by itself. So if you have one that's different, you dimension that one. But everything else will fall under these. Okay. Questions? Alright, so let's take a break. We'll come back and keep and pick it up.